Hello and welcome, my name is Javier Rivera and today in our DTS series we're going to attempt to repair a printer that has a code 031006. If you're here, you already know what this code means, this is pretty much the code of death. Um, you know, it's what, it, what it's telling you is that you have a parity error which pretty much what, is, what, what, you, what it comes down to is that your main board has a blown fuse. Um, the, the printer I'm going to be working on is an XP15000, you have two fuses, fuse 1, fuse 2, 3 and 4 are not there, they don't at least on the on the one that I'm working on, they didn't have them. Um, but I can tell you that this happens because of a bad printhead. Mine, on my case, the printhead was too wet and that's what blew it. Um, so then I was able to get that head um, dry and then, you know, replace that fuse and then I was able to fix it. But if your printhead is dry um, and you still blow this fuse, most likely that printhead is bad. So it is it is repairable but it's not an easy fix. Let me warn you before we get started, okay? This fuse is really, really small. It's really, really tiny, um, and you're gonna see it. It's, it's really hard to weld. So without further ado, let's go ahead. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Let's get started. All right, guys, so here we go. We're gonna try to just power this on so we can see the error code. So as you guys can see, I got a I got a code thirty one zero zero six right away. Um, it didn't even it didn't even um, attempt to boot. Um, the light wasn't just like blinking. It just like literally, you know, I turned it on. You guys saw it. It just it just gave me the code. So that means we got a problem on the main board. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and show you guys how to open it up to to remove the main board so we can do some troubleshooting. All right, so I'm gonna to try to get you guys on the best angle as possible. Um, this is gonna be a little weird. So I'm just gonna remove, I'm gonna remove the, the bottom tray. I'm gonna remove everything. All right, so now we're gonna go on the area where you have the um, printer port and the ethernet cord. Um, that's the area where the main board is. The main board is pretty much located here on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to remove this, um, let you guys see as much as possible, so. All right, once we remove all that, okay, we're gonna bring the bring printer down and refocus. And remove, remove this cover right here. So it's bolt here, bolt on this side. There's a bolt right here on the back so we can remove this cover. And this right here on the bottom is where your main board is. So that's what we're gonna remove. All right, so there's a couple of screws that we're going to need to remove, okay? So right here on this side, I don't know if you can see this part, there's one right there. There is going to be one, so we're gonna remove all these all these ribbon cables. In here, there's gonna be a metal plate, okay, that we need to remove, and it's gonna be right here on the top too, all right? Um, we're going to remove this part to make it easy on us. So we'll be removing this, this top cover also. Um, so pretty much this, this lid, we're gonna remove it. It's three screws on the, on the top. All right, so we're everything out of the way now. Um, there's also two screws here on the back, okay, that we're going to be removing. And now we're going to remove that screw right here. It's all the way in the back. I'm, I'm going to remove this ribbon cable to just open up some space so we can see. So I just unplug, pull a little bit, just be very careful. Also, you want to remove these ribbon cables, these four on the front. And that's going to expose the next screw that we're going to remove, which is this one right here. Now I'm gonna remove one right here. And that's gonna remove this little piece. There's another Phillips right there on the bottom. Now we're gonna we're gonna remove this one that has the magnet in it. The last one should be this one. And it's pretty much the one that is in between the one that has this cable and the one here is like all the way here on the bottom. All right, so now that we remove all that, it should be able to come out. So you should be able to just pull straight down. All 
and of course if you remove this Phillips right here that I forgot now it's loose I'm gonna to try to bring it down so I can show you guys the connections because right now it's being held by all the cables and all the connections all right so right now what we're going to do is remove all the connections now they're, they're all colored so red black white so just remove them red you know black and white all right then there's a ribbon cable right here and what i like to do is remove it from the top um it's really hard to get it out of here on the bottom it's a lot easier to grab it here from the top you're gonna see like pretty much like a brown piece and what you're going to do is pull the pull on it um, if you if you push it's gonna flip it and hold the cable so what you're gonna do is pull it and it'll like lay flat and then you can just literally just straight remove it to the back okay and then now this power cable also it's easier to remove it from the board and we're going to remove this cable that's going to the top and there you have it this is the this is the main board so now pretty much what we want to do um, we want to remove these these two Phillips here to remove the metal plate then we're going to remove these two Phillips in here to get the board out we're going to remove this power cable and then we can remove these cables um, and pretty much get the board out of this this plastic piece um, because these these cables are on the way and I just want to work with just just with the board alone And there we have it right here on this side of the capacitor you're going to find what is f f1 and f2 they're going to be side by side there it is f1 f2 i'm i'm using a magnifying glass to be able to show you guys this so f1 f2 so if you guys see that's F3 and F4, but there there's no fuses in it. So we don't have to worry about those. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna grab my meter. Okay, and on your meter, you wanna be on ohms. Okay, you wanna check continuity or resistance. Okay, that's what you wanna check. And I'm gonna put mine on audible so you guys can hear it. So I'm just gonna test this real quick. So see, I'm just gonna make this audible. There it goes. So then that way you guys can hear the state of the fuse. So first we're gonna check fuse one. Fuse one is good. And now we're gonna check fuse two nothing so we lost fuse two so we're going to go ahead and solder a new fuse um and then um we'll go from there guys i i, I want to show you but uh to solder this with a camera is going to be nearly impossible it, it's really tiny 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 um This is so you guys can hopefully see the size of that fuse. It's that tiny.
All right, guys. So here we go. We're gonna check piece one again. All right. So that fuse one is good. Let's try fuse two. All right. So we're good. Took us a while. Let's see how much of that I can put. And then um, now it's reverse install. So we're just gonna put everything back together. All right, guys, uh, moment of truth. I'm gonna plug the power and let's see what we got. All right. <clears throat> so there we have it, guys. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. No more error. And that's it. Um, now this, this print head, um, I'm gonna have to do a couple of print head cleanings and a couple of things that we still gotta do on this one um, before I can say that this printer's fixed. Um, but you guys see it now we don't have that the code 31 anymore. Um, we were able to fix it by fixing that fuse. Um, the print head now is dry and I will give you guys a little explanation later, but that's it, we got it. So there you have it guys, not a straightforward thing. Um, it takes a little bit to remove that board. Um, you are going to need a lot of materials that not everybody has. You're going to need a solder iron, something, but a fine point one because this thing is super tiny. You're going to need flux, liquid flux for electronics. Um, you're going to need um, to know how to solder. You know, um, you're going to need a magnifying glass. You know, some helping hands to hold that board will help you out a lot. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot, a lot of tweezers and things like that. So this is not an easy repair. It is not straightforward. There's a lot of things you're going to need. Um, all these things I do have, but I wanted to show you guys that it's doable. I've been getting a lot of questions about these codes 031s. Um, but all those 031s is just pretty much telling you to check that main fuse. If you remove that board, and that main fuse don't give you continuity, then it's shot. Um, now, I don't know if I wanna say I recommend fixing it or not. I, I really don't know because it's a 50-50 shot. Um, it could be that it was just, the, the printhead was wet or humid and, and that's what blew the fuse and then after you go ahead and dry it out, then you're good. Or it could just be that the print head is bad and now you're gonna blow the fuse that it costs you a lot of time to repair. Cause actually it's not a lot of money for the fuses, but you know, um, most likely it's gonna be your time. So I don't know if it's worth the time and the effort to fix. However, I've been getting so many questions that I wanted to show you guys that it's doable. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. Uh, hopefully you you like this video. Hopefully if it helps you out, if this is um, what you guys wanna pursue, um, always give me a comment, you know, if, if you like my videos, I really appreciate everybody's support and don't forget to subscribe thank you so much thank you for watching